Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I am going to show you a clip of a recording that I did yesterday for another YouTube channel. Uh, the gentleman's name is Jesse Lee Peterson. He has multiple channels on YouTube. I will provide links to all of them at the bottom here. And, um, you know, if you're not familiar with him, he's basically a conservative radio talk show host who is very vocal in his opinions and beliefs, which I respect. Uh, we share a lot in common as far as what we think that society is lacking in. His main premise is that in order to rebuild society, we need to start by rebuilding the men of that society, to which I agree completely. So I'll provide links for his channels below. Make sure you check him out. He's a very interesting person, and I do appreciate the invitation to appear on his show. This is actually my first real YouTube collaboration with anyone else so I'm very happy with the way it went unfortunately we had some technical difficulties on my end where they couldn't hear me through the Skype so we lost a lot of time otherwise it would have been a much longer interview I do believe that we will connect again and continue where we left off because we didn't get a chance to touch on much uh, so again I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank both Jesse Lee Peterson himself and his producer James Hake uh, both of them were very gentlemanly towards me and respectful towards me. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, everything went smoothly. So check it out, guys. I hope you enjoy this clip and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Amazing. I got to go to my guest. He's going to be on phone, but on Skype. I have with me Abud. He is a YouTuber, businessman, uh, ex-convict. And a fan of the show, it doesn't get any better. And I wanted to talk to him about men, fatherhood, and prison. Uh, let's see here. Abu, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, good afternoon, Jesse. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm sorry about the little confusion there with the Skype thing in the beginning, but we're here now. Excellent. Thank you. I, um, I hear that you're a fan of the show. Thank you for that, if that's true. My pleasure, and I actually appreciate your show and all the work that you do. I feel that you have a very strong and positive message and one that is lacking in our society in general. So I really thank you for what you do. Yes, sir. So you have had and are having a very, very Mamma Mia interesting life. You said that you carried a lot of rage and violence from age 11. Um, how did you become so angry? And how did you get this rage? Where did that come from? You know, Jesse, I think at an early age, I began having some difficulty in school, specifically in interacting with other people. And I didn't know how to you know, deal with it in the best and appropriate manner. Right. Uh, I also didn't have direct male guidance. You know, I didn't have anyone that was able to sit me down and tell me, this is the way that things should be handled correctly, and this is how you should respond you know, when things happen. Yes. So a, a couple instances where I, I made the wrong decision led me down a, a very bad path, ultimately, and it just spiraled from there, downward and downward. Were you, you, were, ra were you raised by your father and mother? I was raised by my father and mother, and uh, I don't place blame on anyone for anything that's happened to me. Uh, however, you know, I, I just feel that they did the best that they could within their ability. But for m many reasons, you know, my father was really not there for me because he was working very, very hard to provide for us. Yes. And there was a disconnect because he was a first generation immigrant from Syria. So when he arrived here, you know, there was a very, very different a very large difference in the culture in itself. So there were things that I was dealing with that he may not have been able to understand. Did you try to talk to him at any point about what you were dealing with? You know, I tried to talk to him, but basically my feeling was that I didn't want to continue in school. I didn't want to continue going and dealing with the issues where now I understand that that's not really a, a, a reasonable solution. So he didn't really have anything to offer me as far as how to avoid conflicts that I was dealing with and how to better handle them. That's unfortunate. When I was growing up, I was uh, my parents were not around, but my grandparents were. And they were living examples of how to deal with things. So I observed them. And so and, and I dealt with life based on what I saw coming from them. And that's what children need in the home. They need perfect parents. 
so that they can continue to grow in a perfect nature. And if you don't have that living example in the homes, it's not going to deal with life when you go outside the home. I agree with you, sir. Absolutely. Did you love your father? Um, yes, I, I did love him. I continue to love him. However, there was always a disconnect between did, us. That, did you have resentment toward or anger toward him due to the disconnection? Uh, I think more so towards my mother, believe it or not, than yeah. my father. Uh, there were some issues that occurred where uh, for a long period of my life, I actually blamed her for some of the things that happened to me. Uh, now, as an adult, in hindsight, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I realize that there is no fault to blame you know, for but anyone the, other than myself. But the parents are to blame because you, when you resent your mother or your father, you become like them. You take on their identity. You take on their mindset. You take on your mother's emotions, the way she thinks and deal with life. You lose your identity and you start to deal with life in a way that a woman would. And, and women tend to overreact. They tend to, you know, not deal with life properly. So it is her fault that you're that way. But as an adult, it becomes your responsibility to forgive her, realizing that she was wrong, but you're wrong for resenting her. So forgive her, and then God would take her identity away from you and give you back yourself. And yourself will not deal with life in the way that your mother did. I think that's great advice, and I'm working on it as we speak. Is she still living? She is still living, yes. You got to go and confront her, forgive her, and don't do it all soft like, oh, mommy, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> mommy, I know you did your best. You got to be serious about it. Realize that she could not help herself because she hate men and she hate her mother. And so she didn't have love to give you. And uh, so she couldn't help it. She didn't have love. And so you forgive her knowing that she could not help herself, just as you couldn't help yourself at age 11, your mother cannot help herself. And then when you forgive her, God will forgive you. Don't ask her for forgiveness. You forgive her and God will forgive you. That makes sense? That does make sense. I appreciate that advice. And uh, I got some more stuff I got to ask you about your life. It's so interesting when I come back, back in a moment. You got it. Okay. Amazing. Abu, are you a Muslim? Christian. You're Chris. Is Abu a Muslim name? It is an Arabic name. Uh, as I mentioned, my father is from Syria. Uh -huh. However, we are from the minority segment, like 10% Christian of that country. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I read that you tried to go to school for the sake of your mother and you never fit in. Is that true? Yes. So after I had my first round of uh, issues at school, I ended up dropping out uh, at a very early age. I also ended up in juvenile detention. Uh, after that period of incarceration, uh, for my mother's sake, you know, I did make an effort to go back. And it was very short-lived, and it didn't work out well for me. I cannot understand why parents uh, put their children through that kind of stuff. If you're having a rough time in school... I don't know uh, why the parent would put you through that kind of trauma. I was talking to, a, there was a young lady calling to my show who happened to be white, and she lives in a black and Hispanic neighborhood, and her little son is going through hell with those kids. They're, uh, he's, uh, he's being traumatized, and yet she keeps putting him back in that. Why do you think parents do that rather than taking their kids out? You know, Jesse, that's a very interesting point you bring up. Uh, something you didn't mention in, in introducing me is that I am also a husband and father of three. I'm a father of three young daughters. Right on. So they are all in school currently now, and I absolutely agree with you in the sense that if my daughters are having any issue, um, I will absolutely never force them to continue. But yeah. To answer, your, to answer your question, I think that people are just so structured in the way that society is that they kind of refuse to ever step outside of that, even when it's for the benefit and sake of their own children. That's a good point. So it seems as though they trust society way uh, better than they do what's right within their own hearts. They know what's right, but they don't trust that. They trust the world. I agree. Amazing. I also read that um, one time you beat up an old boy, an older boy, who, sp who spit in your face, 
And um, so what, James? So one time you beat up an older boy who spit in your face and didn't understand why you got in trouble. That is correct. And that was in one of the efforts I made to go back to school for my mother's sake. Uh, in this case, it was a technical school. I had already been thrown out of the traditional school. And in this one, I actually liked it. I was only there for a sh very short period, about a week or two. Uh, I was focusing my attention on auto body, so cosmetic repair of vehicles. And I actually thought that this was something that could be good for me. I felt that I was interested in learning it. I liked the environment. And again, it was very short-lived because of what happened. Uh, a, a guy basically spit on me. He, he was drinking a Coca-Cola, and he just looked at me and spit all over me for Amazing. no reason. Amazing. I responded and reacted uh, in, in the wrong way, aggressively. And I ended up fighting with him, as you mentioned. Uh, he lost the fight. He was a lot older than me. And very shortly after, you know, I was seated in the classroom, and I saw the principal uh, with two police officers walk in, and they asked me to step outside with them, and they informed me that I had been thrown out of that school now as a result. Amazing. Did you tell your father what was happening in school and that your mother was making you go to school in spite of this? You know, um, I did tell him, but we didn't really have that strong of a relationship at yeah, that time. Yeah. So as I mentioned, he was so focused on working and trying so hard to provide for us. So he was not really there as a result of the hours that he had to put in. So there really wasn't a lot of opportunity for me yeah. to talk to him. So I was really dealing more so with my mother. That's amazing, man. Well, you got to forgive your mother so you could be free. So uh, you kept fighting with cops and guards in jail and prison. Um, not so much fighting with them. You know, as a juvenile... As I mentioned, in the juvenile detention, I unfortunately, you know, was having some issues with some of the guards there. I wouldn't call it fighting. It was more like them coming in my cell and attacking me and, you know, beating me. So, you know, it was just one of those things where it was very unfortunate. Um, I, I never wished that on anyone, but that left me kind of scarred and left me with a lot of emotional damage where after I was released from that, I didn't really know how to act appropriately. I didn't, I didn't feel that I fit in anywhere, and yeah. I just didn't know what to do with myself then. I had um, a lot of anger as a result, of course, also. Um, at, how old were you when you first went to juvenile or jail? You know, it started first with a couple arrests for minor things, and before they put me in juvenile detention, I was actually placed in homeless shelters uh, as a result of being a runaway a couple times. They put me in these shelters, and then when I ended up in the juvenile detention, for the first time, I was age 13 or 14. Amazing, man. What is your life like now? What is it today? You know, today, Jesse, I'm, I'm extremely blessed and thankful for what I have. You know, uh, first and foremost, I pride myself on being the best father that I can be. I have a wonderful, wonderful wife that stood by me for many years uh, while I was away as an adult in actual prison, and I really feel grateful and I owe her everything. So my, my first focus is to be the best family man that I can be. Yeah. Second to that, you know, as you mentioned, I'm a businessman as well, and I really try my best to help others. That's my driving force now, and that's really my motivation in making any YouTube videos to begin with was that hopefully – you know, my message and my revealing these things that happened to me, even though it's maybe to my detriment, I'm, a, I'm ashamed of a lot of the things, but I expose myself and put myself out there in hopes that some people may learn from it and possibly avoid making the same mistakes that I did. I have two more questions for you. May I hold you over just for two more questions? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm here for as long as you need me, Jesse. Oh, okay. Amazing! His YouTube, youtube.com slash abood, number one, A-B-O-U-D, number one, and also on Instagram, back in a moment. Abood, we were looking at pictures of, um, we were looking at pictures of your daughters, you with your daughters during the break there. It's really nice to see uh, father and children together. It's, it's such a nice picture. Thank you so much, Jesse. I really appreciate that. And that's part of the reason why I very much support your message uh, is because I agree with you in the sense that I feel like one of the largest problems we as a society have is the removal of the shame in allowing 
broken homes, uh, single parent households, and you know having children with multiple partners. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's terribly damaging. You know, something I'd like to add is um, I also volunteer and work with young incarcerated children as well. Uh, something I just like to do for myself as giving back. And one of the first things that I noted in getting to know these kids is that almost every single one of them was missing a father yep. in their upbringing. Yeah, exactly. So um, quick three questions. What is a man? Well, what is a man? Aside from the anatomy, yes. um, a, a man is someone who always stands strong and firm in his beliefs, who will always do right regardless of who is or isn't watching, uh, who will always guide and direct and love his own family, uh, children especially. For me, a man is someone who will always protect women and children regardless of whether or not they are his own. Uh, and for me personally, again, someone who will always do the will of God. Uh, for me, I am absolutely a man of God, and whatever it is that God asks of me, uh, I, I will do always. Do you have perfect peace? I don't have perfect peace, Jesse. You will get that when you go and forgive your mother. I, I hope so, and I look forward to that. No, you will, because God's going to take that spirit of anger away from you and give you back his spirit, and in his spirit, there's perfect peace only. That sounds wonderful. And the last question, what is love? That is a very good question. <laughs> uh, something I'd never actually thought of in answering, but I would say that love is the feeling you have towards another, whereas you will basically put them and their well-being equal to or ahead of your own. Uh, with, with my own family and my own wife, I would actually, you know, lay my life down for them. The, the extent of my love to them is that I will sacrifice, I will do whatever is necessary as far as suffering or even making my life more difficult if that is to their benefit. I will always be there for them, and I will never, ever lie to them. Uh, that's something also that I feel is a very large issue in society where lying has become so acceptable that almost everyone I know lies in some form or another, and it's a terrible thing. Once you forgive your mother, you're going to see what love is. It's going to be amazing. It's going to blow your mind. And again, I'm encouraging you to go and forgive her, but do not ask for forgiveness. God said, when we forgive others, he will forgive us. Because if you ask people for forgiveness, they see that as a weakness, and they'll control you with that. So he, he has it set up is, as we forgive he will forgive and make us free. Well, Jesse, I respect you uh, and your opinion, and I know that it is the absolutely correct thing. It is difficult for me to do, but I will. I will do so. Yes, I sir. Will do that. Abdul, it's been a joy talking to you. And again, I, I mean, Abu, um, I'm sorry for the mess up in the beginning. We're going to have you back, though. I enjoy talking to you. It would be my pleasure, Jesse, and I thank you again for having me. Absolutely. God bless you, buddy. Likewise. God bless. Thank uh, you. All right. Amazing. Yes, sir.